Okay, to remove the fluid, the antifreeze from the radiator, there's a little button back here that you turn. I just use a crescent wrench. You turn it, you drain all your radiator fluid. That way you can get to your water pump. Okay, I jacked the car up to get underneath to that little bolt to remove the antifreeze because the pot wouldn't fit. So I jacked it up. I got to jack underneath the jack stand for safety. We don't want to release the antifreeze into the environment. That's why I'm catching it, then I'm disposing of it properly. Now, I used a pot that you make food in, so don't go making no food after you have the antifreeze in it because you're going to kill yourself and a bunch of other people. Is that worth My face? Oh, no. Go. You're good. I removed the pot out of the way so I could lower the car. Before I did that, I tightened up that nut to drain the radiator. Be very careful tightening it because it's plastic. You want to snug it and give it a little more. Now I'm going to lower the car. Got my jack stand out of the way. So here we go. Fifteen, sixteen millimeter little socket screwdriver. You loosen this, you loosen this, you remove part of the intake. You also have to disconnect this hose. I have no idea what it's for, but it pops out real easy with this deal. Just jiggle it out gently and it will come out. Move it out of your way. Now you have your water pump. I drew a little sketch of the pulley pattern for the, the belt because Ford didn't put one anywhere on the, on the engine, so I had to draw one. Very simple though. Okay, okay. Here's the pulley for the water pump. We have to re, uh, tighten these four bolts and we're going to leave the belt on, the time, the serpentine belt on because it's going to help us keep tension. So don't take the belt off yet. Leave the belt on, put your wrench in and just crack these bolts. See it's slipping because you need, I'm putting pressure on the belt. See I was able to break it. So if you pull your serpentine belt off first, you ain't gonna be able to do it. As you can see, I'm having a hard time with it. There we go, we got the second one. Third one. I'm putting pressure on the belt right here. Fourth one. This here is the water hose to the radiator. Get some channel locks, you squeeze these. You move it out of the way. And this, you get that out of the way. Now be very careful with this. This is a thermostat housing and it's plastic and they're cheap. So when you remove your hose with your channel locks, don't start tugging on it. Because if you break this, you got another, a big another mess. So you remove this hose just out of your way so you can work at it. So you could get to your tension pulley and take the tension off and remove the belt. So, 3 8 drive socket. You put it in this here little groove, you torque up on it, it takes the tension off the belt, and you just slide it off. There you go. Since you have the fan belt out, if there's any cracks like that, you're already there, replace it. Now, I didn't buy it when I got the water pump, so I'm going to have to make a trip. But tell, believe me, it is worth it. Yeah. As you saw earlier, I, re, I, I, tighten, I um, untighten the bolts using the fan belt. So these come right off. And the hose is out of your way. The fan belt's out of your way. You have a free shot at the water pump. And look at that, the pulley is loose and it's giving you access to, to the water pump. Here's the new water pump and it looks a lot like the old water pump. This is a brand new one. It has all these little bolts. What I'm going to do in that water pump, just like a clock, I'm going to start at noon and go clockwise. I'm going to remove this one, of course, from the old water pump. And over here on my little toolbox, I'm going to put them in that order. That way, when I go to put my new water pump on, I know what bolt came out of what hole and I replace them. Down there, 
here is another water hose we have to get rid of it uh, remove I mean move out of the way it has the same clamp so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna squeeze it and move that hose out of the way there's another hose right here that I squeeze and get out and then way over here is just an another one I just got to pinch and get out of the way so that's what I'm gonna do but I'm not gonna show you guys you guys have already saw me do the first one so okay the fourth bolt into removing the water pump is behind this here whatever the hell this thing is it's for the air conditioning so the socket didn't work so I got to use an open-end closed-end wrench 8 millimeter these have all been 8 millimeter and they're breaking real easy I didn't have to really tug on them they've been easy to come up and I am putting them in order so I'm just letting you know that when you get to your fourth one you're gonna need a boxed wrench or because the socket don't fit on it and there we go ah. lost my damn leg okay. this is the pulley for the belt the very last bolt is behind it I still have to remove these but this is no big deal you squeeze it there's another one here the car has 150,000 miles and you could hear the bearings and it's got a little slot so when you're gonna go run out to get your uh, serpentine belt you might as well pick this pulley up. So I'm gonna remove it. This is gonna make it easier to get to the very last bolt. And then I'm gonna remove this clamp and that clamp. Move the water pump forward. And as you can see back here, is a clamp for the hose, the, the lower hose. Now, where you grab the clamp to remove it is pointing towards the back. And they do that for a reason because your ser serpentine belt's gonna go through here. These can't be in the way. So once I remove the last bolt, pull the water pump forward, it's gonna allow me to grab these, squeeze them, and pull the hose out. Okay, I squeeze this clamp with channel locks, moved it out of the way. Uh, there's the water pump. I still have one bolt on the water pump. Fluid's coming out. I got a little pan under there. This hose is giving me issues. Okay, up here is another one. I squeeze that and move that out of the way. So it's tight up here. Matter of fact, now that we're here, you might as well think about replacing this little hose because it's a bear to, to get to. So I don't know what this little hose is called. We're gonna go ahead and buy that along with everything else. So right now I'm gonna just remove these hoses, take the last bolt out, move the water pump forward, break that clamp, take the water pump out. That's my next step. Re uh, remove this, remove that, water pump out, Last clamp, squeeze it, and keep it towards the back so it won't hit the fan belt. There we go. Okay, we got that one out. This one is the one that's gonna be hard. But I think once I have the bolt out, once I have this last bolt out. Okay, yeah, so let's take the last bolt out. Go. Okay. I got the, I loosened this one, loosened this clamp. I had to shove in this screwdriver and that screwdriver up in here to break the seal. I was able to get it. Same thing with this one. I got the screwdriver in there. And what you basically have to do is get some separation. Get that in there, you move it around, it breaks like a seal, and you're able to. Well, it didn't happen, but trust me, eventually, you'll be able to get the hose out. There's not that much room. It's actually, a pain in the ass, but. Ah, there we go. And there you go. Water pump comes out.
now that we're here, let's keep recording now. One of the things you have to do is get one of these little devices and scrape all this stuff off from the old water pump, the gasket. You gotta make sure you gotta scrape all sides of it, the top, the bottom, because if you don't, you're not gonna get a seal and it's gonna be bad. You're gonna get a leak and then you gotta do this all over. So that's what I'm gonna do next. It's gonna take some time, it's time consuming. I suggest you make sure you get it right. Scrape all this out. Okay, according to the guys who are about the water pump, you're not supposed you don't have to use silicone. You could just put the gasket like this, line it up, put it in, and it'll be fine. But if you do use silicone, it helps it. Not need it, but it helps it. So I figured what the hell. You just gotta put a little bit around the whole deal. Not only that. It might help it like hold so it won't move. So just put a little bit around the edges. I believe in the past some people have put like grease to hold it in, to hold the gasket so it won't move. The guy said just, uh, this around to help it but it's not needed according to to them how's this gonna go it's gonna go like that it's gonna go around here definitely gonna go in there so I hope I don't mess up I hope I don't regret it I have a leak I have to take everything else apart but it's just to help it. And that's what we want to do, just to help it. Okay. Now, make sure there's no dust, no debris. I think that's it. See how it helps it? Looks like hold it in place. Watch. And I went, stayed right here, I bought. This is for the bypass. This is the one that was up here. So I bought the other one. You see they're they're not the same size. They're a little bit bigger. But it's the same diameter. So what I'm gonna do right now is just cut this, make it to the same size. Just take a little bit off this one. I'm putting silicone on the other side of the gasket. Like I said, I'm not putting a lot. I'm just rubbing it in. I might make a mess because as I'm putting it in, the water pump's going to be hitting here, hitting there. But oh well. Let's put 
So it could help it, like the guy said, it helps it. Okay. Now we got to get put this hose in, but we got to get the clamps. Okay, got it. This has got to face that way. find the other clamp. Go ahead and turn that on. Okay. okay, remember I said line them all up, but it doesn't matter, they're all the exact same size, so you can use any bolt. I'm gonna put one bolt, which would be the first one, and that's how I'm gonna hang the water pump, and then try to align it. But as I'm doing that, I gotta make sure I don't rub this all over the place. I gotta get, that up in there for the thermostat housing that's going that's working it's going good then I gotta you know what maybe I won't do that one first maybe I'll just have to fight get up in there get up in there ah Line one of these up. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Get in there. Now hopefully the gasket didn't move. That's why it's sometimes good to use the silicone. So that's in, just loose to hang it. Now as you're putting the other bolts in, you kind of have to move it around to make sure that uh, the gasket didn't move. And they go right in like this one. Hopefully they'll just go right in. Hopefully. See that got the thread, so that one's in. Now, when I took these bolts out, I didn't tell you that there was not a lot of pressure on them. So when you torque these back in, I don't think you have to over tighten them. Just put them snug and give them a little more. That way you won't strip the threads. Don't forget this is aluminum block. You don't want to strip uh, the threads because now you got a world of problems. So far it looks like the gasket didn't move. It's good. Like I said, I got these in. I got the clamp in. So all I got to do is move this up. This is new. I went down to my local Department store, I bought the other hose. This is the bypass hose I found out. I bought the idle pulley. The tension pulley, still good. There's no, doesn't make noise. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put all the bolts in. Okay, as you remember, there's one little bolt that's back here behind this pipe that you need a wrench for. You know, just once you get every, and when I tightened them, I kind of skipped every other one, just like you do with a tire pattern. So you don't start tightening here and the thing gets warped. So I tightened this one, then that one, and went back and forth. And finally, I got all 12. And like I said, they can't be super tight because it's aluminum. You, you can feel it where if you go a little more, you're going to ruin it. Now I'm going to get my wrench and work on this one. Now, one thing I messed up, Remember this uh, bottom hose, the clamps are back here, the ears that you grab it on so it won't hit the fan belt? I should have put the hose on before I put the water pump on. I messed up, my bad. Don't make the same mistake. Um, I had the water pump, the bypass hose on the water pump that slipped right into the thermostat housing. Again, this is all plastic. It eased in gently. I put my two clamps on before. That way now I could just go up uh, I bought the another idler pulley. I'm gonna put that on. That should be very simple. 
So right now I'm going to just torque this one uh, and figure out what I'm going to do with this. I might have to jack the car up and get underneath, but I'll figure something out. I This uh, clip locked. I guess they do this. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a real damn mechanic. So all I got to do is squeeze it and that will come off. So if I aim that towards the back and I squeeze it, I should. Yeah, I'm going to ruin it. Ah! <laughs> okay, here's this other hose. Uh, I believe this is for the heater. Just go ahead and slip it right in. Here's the clamp back here. Ta-da. There it is. Does that look like a cedar, right? Let me see if I can get it up just a little more. There we go. All right. Okay, this is the original idler pulley. I went down to a local uh, the parts store. Let's just say their name rhymes with DAPA. Dapa Auto Parts didn't have it. I had to go to a, well, this other place with the zone. And I got, I got this one. They don't quite look alike, but they're the same diameter, same everything. From the original one, you're gonna keep this. That came off the original one. You just spin this part off. You put it through the front. Pop that in through the back. You tighten this. Make sure you're you're in halfway straight that it won't be all cocked. Then you just put it in, and it's a 15 millimeter wrench, a uh, 15 millimeter socket. And there, well, make it more and there it is. Brand new, no noise, it doesn't wobble. So, okay. Have a bad hat about the here right now. I'm just guessing at where the. Ah, look at that. Right in. Remember when we loosened these, a the fan belt was on. It helped us hold it with the torque. So that's what we might have to do is put the fan belt back on. And then go ahead and tighten these. Besides, I forgot what size wrench or what size socket these were. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. Why ain't you going there? Come on, don't do this to me. Damn it. Why ain't you going there? I'm loosening the other ones. There it is. Come on, what are you doing? Okay, now I gotta find the right sock. It was a ten millimeter. Yes, it was. So right now I'm gonna just snug them. Actually, I'm gonna try to. No, I can't get no torque on them. Right now I'm just. Okay. Let me try something. Go. 
Okay, you know what I figured out? See the screwdriver? We're shoving it in between the bolts. Trying to give me some leverage. I put the 10 millimeter socket in. Now the bad part is if this slips, you're gonna donate all kinds of skin to. So then you just torque. There you go, see it worked. Just be careful, because when you slip, you break knuckles and you donate skin. sure it's right in there not <clears throat> let me do a go around the world one more time just to make okay we're good okay i went down to uh what did i call him dapa dapa auto parts got a new belt let me get my little drawing so i can remember how this went or how this goes okay here's the alternator so it goes alternator underneath the pulley, around the AC compressor, around the AC compressor. I hope they gave me the right belt. There's the AC compressor. Goes up over the water pump. Up over the water pump. Back around the water pump to the harmonic balancer. So let me get the harmonic balancer in. The harmonic balancer has grooves, so you gotta make sure the belt lines up with the grooves. Like over here, there's grooves. Over here, there's grooves. Up here, there's grooves. Aha. Uh -huh. See, so now, you know what? Let me go. There we go. Up around the alternator, underneath the pulley. I don't know what this is, a mop pump or some damn thing. AC compressor up around the water pump. Underneath the water pump, harmonic balancer too. Okay. Now. Remember the thermostat housing is plastic, so you gotta be very careful with it. You break that, it's hard to, well it's plastic, figure it out. wrong I thought these clips had a face back to stay out of the way of the fan belt but after I put the new fan belt on I realized yeah you don't need that so I took the fan belt off so I was able to squeeze those clips and move them forward now we're ready to put the fan belt back on Just gotta make sure it's in the grooves it's in the grooves I got me a longer torque breaker bar whatever you want to call it here it goes Got to make sure that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in. And you see how these clips are nowhere near the fan belt. So go ahead and leave them to the front. That way you don't have to worry about them being in the back. I got my idle pulley on. I got the top of the radiator hose on. There's another hose for the heater. That's on and the clip's in place. This one, the clip's in place. We torqued down these bolts. Belt's back where it's supposed to be. At this point, I'm going to take the put the intake back on with this deal. Tell them I will do that right now. I'm running out of breath, people. We'll 
go ahead and slide that in. Slide this one in. And this, I believe, you see this ridge? I believe that ridge has to get into that slot. That's why you lift that up. There you go, see it fell right in. That's it, all I gotta do is tighten these with the, was it 5 sixteens? 5 sixteens, make sure it's seated well. We'll put the antifreeze in it. And we'll start it up, hopefully it won't leak. Okay, I tighten these up. Tighten that one up, it's in, it's solid. I put in this deal, now I'm gonna put the antifreeze in it. It's the uh, one you gotta mix. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dump about half of it in there. Try not to make a mess. And then I'm gonna, after I get half a gallon in here, I'm gonna put half a gallon of water. I mean, you gotta use distilled water. If you use water from the faucet, it's got all kinds of additives and stuff and you're gonna get a calcium buildup. So you wanna use distilled water. Oh, and while you're putting water in it, get underneath with your flashlight. See if you're dripping. Because if you're dripping, well, you got problems. So far, so good. Cut. Go. So here's distilled water, like I was saying earlier. That way, uh, you don't get all that calcium buildup. And at least that's what a real mechanic told me. I'm gonna dump this in there. And I put in half antifreeze and half water because ah yeah, you kind of mix it up a little. So I'm gonna dump three quarters of this and back to the antifreeze. You can hear it bubbling up. Hear water, air, the air coming out. Hope it's not dripping on the bottom. Now they sell this stuff in 50-50, ready to get mixed. I didn't buy that stuff because I'm cheap. Wow, you can hear it's not dripping, is it? Yeah, you hear the air coming out, which is real cool. The only thing is, I only have one gallon of distilled water. Okay, I have uh, filled it up with antifreeze and the water, did the 50-50 thing, make sure I got the same amount of antifreeze as water. I'm going to go, because this is a pressurized system, well they all are, I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's tight. I already went over the fan belts on, all the water hoses are on, it's not leaking. It's time to start it and see if it leaks. so good folks no leaking from the bypass hose I don't see anything that hose isn't leaking so far so good 
Now what you got to watch is your reservoir, there's water and there's cooling in there. With the, with the thermostat open, if all the air didn't get out, either you're going to have air locked in there, which is going to be a problem to get the air out, which means with the bypass hose, it should not happen. But what may happen is, this will go down. So you just got to keep an eye on it. If it doesn't go down right now, tomorrow, check it again. You got to keep checking it because you don't want this to go these things over here. These damn good engines. They're made by the Germans. They can't win a war, but damn, they make engines.